Hi, some of you may know me from that fabulously famous WhatsApp video of me dancing away. But that's not exactly what I wanted to be famous for when I came to Malawi. I want to talk to you today about water sector financing. I know that sounds boring, but hear me out. A few years ago, I was working in a water office in Mulanje district. That office is meant to provide services to rural areas as relates to water. Some of the things they do are going out to monitor water points, providing support to the committees that are supposed to manage those water points, and supervising major repairs as they come up. Now, this office wasn't able to really do that job fully because they didn't have enough money to actually get out to the field. We're talking about a district that has thousands of water points to look after, just over 2,000 water points in a district, and they have three staff. On top of that, their budget is rough, roughly 440,000 kwacha a month. Um, from that, they take out paying for rentals for the office, paying for the guards to stand outside the office, paying for stationery, paying for utilities, the essentials for their office. Once those things are removed, they have very little left over to actually put fuel in the bike to get to the field and do all those things they're supposed to be doing. So what were we trying to do with that challenge? Well, I spent a year in that office trying to figure out how we could maximize every tambala to actually make it so that this office could get out and reach those communities that have water points. And I wasn't the only one doing this. I had colleagues out in other districts trying the very same thing, all with the same result. Was it working? A little bit, but not really. These minimal gains could not ensure that water points across the whole district were being monitored and maintained. So at this point, we realized there's another problem here. We actually need more money coming from the top down to the districts to ensure that they could provide services to communities. So we asked ourselves, what can we actually do about this problem? Maybe the problem is that people up here don't know what the funding gap is down here. Maybe if we put together information that highlighted what this funding gap is and brought it up here, the problem would be solved. Do you remember these three activities we talked about earlier? What the water office really needs to be doing on a day-to-day -day basis? Well, we costed those three activities. What would it cost to do that for the whole district for the whole year? And we found, on average, districts would need to receive double the budget they're currently receiving to do that. Wait, did I just say double the budget? That seems like an impossible ask. But actually, when we dug into the numbers in the national budget, that only represents an increase from about 0.4% to 1% of all the money that already goes to district councils. Now that we had this information, we decided to take it to the top. And where did we go first? The Ministry of Agriculture, Irrigation and Water Development. There we were told, oh, actually, we don't deal with district level budgets. We just make budgets for the central level government offices. So we took our information over to the Ministry of Local Government. There they told us, Actually, we deal with all the sectors at district level. We can't stand up for one sector in particular. That's the job of the line ministry. You should go to the Ministry of Agriculture, Irrigation, and Water Development. So we rolled our eyes a little bit, swallowed our pride, and walked back to the Ministry of Agriculture, Irrigation, and Water Development. There they said, you're back. We still can't help you. After going back and forth between these two ministries for a few months, we found out that there's a desk officer at the Ministry of Finance responsible for water. So, we took our information, went to the Ministry of Finance, knocked on their door, and they basically said, we just compile all the budgets from all the sectors. We don't make any decisions here. Go back to the line ministry. And so, we went back to the Ministry of Agriculture, Irrigation, and Water Development. After all that door knocking, you might be asking yourself, Who's to blame? Well, the system is set up in such a way that no one single person is responsible for that decision and therefore no one single person is to blame. And worse still, we kept hearing the sentiment that this is the way things are done in Malawi and they cannot change. Now, while all of this has been going on, we've been trying to sort out this issue, water officers at the district level are still not able to do their jobs. As you can see, we've been trying, but we're just one voice. We need many voices to make this change. We need more NGOs, we need more members of parliament, we need more donors, we need more government workers, we need everyone to be on board so that we can change what people have said cannot be changed. My name is Sydney Burns, I'm the Program Director of Engineers Without Borders Canada, a member of the Water and Environmental Sanitation Network in Malawi, and a partner of Baseflow.